Happy New Comic Book Day, webheads! Guys, yes, it's another new comic book day. Are you super excited? What is the book that you're most excited about picking up today? Is it a modern day issue? Is it a back issue? Let me know in the comments below. And guys, like I said, hopefully you find everything that you're looking for. Welcome to Spider Slayers Comic Book Hall fans. This is episode 580, the video series where I share with you what I get at my LCS, which is Comic Central, located in the city of Sanford. So if you guys are ever in Central Florida area, stop by, tell Mike Spider Slayers sent you. They'll provide you with some great customer service. You'll get a mysterious black bag and inside will be your comic books. But today, we got a lot of stuff to show you and not only do I have mysterious black bags, but I also have this Venom Lethal Protector box. Such a great box to put more comics in. And what's inside this box? Oh my gosh, guys, you won't believe it. It's a pretty sizable haul. So here we go. We're gonna, I think we got a couple bags here. All right, so we got bag number one, and then we have bag number two. Oh my gosh, look at that. So let's put the let's put the box here. Let's let's open them. Let's open up bag number one. That's the smaller bag, okay? So let's put this one here. So bag number one, we open it up and we get the bags and boards. So I had to get bags and boards, so we got that first. And then I wound up getting this just because it looks cool. This is Captain America issue 218. What a great looking comic book right there. And this is graded at a 9.4. What a nice book as you get to see uh, the condition that is in. This thing presents so well. Uh, this was made in 1978. Bright, vibrant color here. This is a Don Glut story, Sal Basima cover. Uh, Sal Basima, Mike Esposito, and John Targlione art. Iron Man appearance, Marvel Man, Quasar, Blue Streak, a Vamp, Texas Twister, and a Maradroid cameo. So that's pretty awesome. You get to see all those characters there. I, I love that Iron Man is in here. So that's what drew me to this book was Iron Man in the background. So great little slab to add to the collection there. No real major key, you know, but again, I'm not in it for the hardcore money. I'm in it for the books looking cool, right? Okay, so that was bag number one. Now is bag number two. I don't know if these comics are separated or not. I have no idea, but I got some cool stuff here today to show you. Okay, first things first. Not done with the back issues yet. I wound up getting Wolverine Old Man Logan. Okay, the complete set. I have the trade of this, but I never had the individual issues of this. And it was that much money right there, as you can see. And I am so excited to have this. This is a phenomenal set to add in your comic book collection. If you guys have never read the original Old Man Logo by Mark Miller, I suggest that you do. This is one of the best Wolverine stories I have ever read. So good. Oh my God, I was so excited to see that. So really great stuff. Then I wound up getting this incredible Hulk random issue of 170. A really nice looking cover here. This is a classic Hulk cover. He goes, stop, you will not hurt the girl. If you try, Hulk will smash you. Hulk will smash you all. They lurk in the volcano. And he's, and he's trying to rescue this girl right here. What a great looking cover, man. You know, some of these Hulk covers, you know, they're really old and beat up. This one was in great shape. So that's another reason why I bought this one. No real significance key there. All right, now I think we're into the normal books, all the books that came out this week. So here's the stack of normal ones. So let's get going here, guys. The first one is No One. This is issue two. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of issue one. Maybe I have to go back and reread it again. Uh, but I did put issue two on my FOC when I originally ordered this because, again, it takes place in that superhero universe for Image Comics. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's 
it is what it is. It's more like a detective style type of book. So uh, we'll see what happens if I decide to read it or not. So that's issue two. Then we have a series I'm really enjoying. This is The Harrower. This is issue three. Very horrific book. Man, the action went balls to the walls at the end of the last issue. It got very gory. A lot of things happened in it. You get to see more of that in the beginning of this issue. Uh, I'm so curious to see what's going to happen going forward here. We got this kid that like is in all all with the harrower. And he's this mythological creature that no one knew that really exists until now. And he's causing all kinds of mayhem in a party uh, at a high school party. So that's really cool. All right. So then we wind up getting one of four Alex Ross variants. I know there's four this week. We wind up getting uh, the Thanos one from Warlock Rebirth. This is issue one. That's really cool. And then we got the actual Warlock Rebirth issue one main cover. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this series has to offer. I think there's going to be a female Warlock. Why, we don't know. But if you're curious about interior artwork, here you go. I feel like we haven't seen very much from the character as of late. It looks like it's going to go a little bit into his history. And uh, again, I want to see what this book is about. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. So Warlock Rebirth, issue one. All right. And then we wind up getting She-Hulk, issue 12. Uh, this is a gorgeous cover here. This was in my top 10 comic book covers of the week. If you guys haven't checked it out, I'm going to leave a card up above here so you can click on that. But great cover story. I'm not just, I'm not really feeling it, uh, but she has come across this new guy that's a villain here. And uh, from what I heard is that She-Hulk might be interacting with more people. And that's what this book has been lacking, right? So we'll see. There's a little bit more action in here. Looks like maybe the artwork is getting back to normal to the way it was. Maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, so we'll see what it has to offer. That's issue 12. Then we have Rogue Sun. This is also issue 12, another solid series. I think this is the end of a story arc where Dylan is going back to his high school during prom and he's got to try to save people that are being uh, being attacked by his arch nemesis here. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I love the artwork here. I love the growing pains that Dylan is going through as well. So yes, I'm excited about Rogue Sun issue 12, the final issue of this story arc. <laughs> My radio automatically goes off. Then we have the Red Goblin. This is issue three. This is the Alex Ross uh, variant as well with Sandman on here. Really cool. And then we have the actual main cover uh, where we have Red Goblin on there, which you can expect, right? So here we go. Here's some of the interior artwork as Norman Osborn is trying to do battle against this Goblin King who's made his appearance from way back when Dan Slott wrote the Amazing Spider-Man comic. What I like about this book is the bright and vibrant artwork, but yet it has this creepy horrific tone to it as well. Great stuff in there. I can't wait to see more of Rascal, who is Normie Osborn's symbiote. Then we have Hellcat issue two. I was all right with issue one. It didn't blow me out of the water. So I'm going to give issue two a try to see the direction of this book. Okay. So here's some of the artwork in here. That's a little bit creepy. And uh, yeah, I mean, Hellcat's been going through some crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see what this has to offer. It's got Sleepwalker. If you guys are not familiar with Sleepwalker, it was a character made back in the 90s. So hopefully they explore that character a little bit more. And guys, it's now time for those Facebook group shout outs. Our first shout out of the day goes to Corey who said, I got my first Tyler Kirkman Something is Killing the Children issue 26 Erica Slaughter Battle Damage variant in the mail today. Man, that looks awesome. Erica Slaughter with that chainsaw and the blood squirting everywhere. Great stuff. Thanks for sharing, Corey. Then we have Dave124, who said the Venom shelf is always growing, and he's showing off some of his best Venom books. Some of them are graded, and then he's got that awesome Diamond Select PVC statue of Venom. I got that one myself. So cool, Dave. Thank you so much. Then we have Ken, who got this today at a live auction. 
He says, do I open it? Possible Batman Adventures issue 12. I think that is the first appearance of Harley Quinn. Man, I would open that thing up and see what's inside. That is awesome, Ken. Congratulations. Very curious on what you paid for that one. And then we have Michael, who's going through his 50-plus long comic book boxes, and he was adding them to the database, and this is what he came across. X-Men, he's got the first appearance of Mysterio, first appearance of Galactus, giant size X-Men, and four ultimate fallouts. Holy cow, Michael. Thank you for sharing those impressive comic books. And if you guys want to get shouted out on future hauls, just head on over to Facebook, search for Comic Book Corner 2.0 Webhead Unite, and once you answer a few questions and abide by the rules, you will have access to this wonderful comic book community where we show, where we show off everything that we pick up, whether it's from the comic shop, our mail calls, and just having great conversations about comics in general, guys. You're not going to want to miss it. We're over 1,600 members strong. And like I said, you never know when you could get shouted out on future hauls. Continuing on with the haul, we have Hollow's Eve. This is issue two. We got that Ryan Brown variant cover. It looks absolutely awesome. Also, on my top 10 comic book covers of the week, let's check out the artwork in here as we get to see Janine as she's trying to maybe possibly break out Ben Riley out of his prison. But we find out that her mask gives her powers where they might affect other human beings. So if she wears a mask, on her face that's a werewolf, she can turn that person into a werewolf by a bite or a scratch and whatnot, because that was witnessed in the last issue. So really cool stuff, and then we get to see, is it Maxine Danger, is that her name? I don't even know. Uh, from the Beyond Corporation is making her appearance in this comic, so they're continuing that story as well. Really excited about this book, hopefully, Hollow's Eve definitely has some legs and she sticks around in Spider-Man's Rogues Gallery. All right, then we go on the independent scene once again. We have Gunslinger Spawn, issue 19, always a solid book. Can't wait for the next issue as Gunslinger is going down his hit list and taking down the people that have taken down his family from the past. Brett Booth artwork is always outstanding. I mean, look at the way Spawn looks in this book. My gosh, if Brett Booth can draw every Spawn book, you guys would be in for a treat, but I'm pretty sure he would be burnt out after that. Can't wait for this next issue. Then, talking about Alex Ross, we got The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 24, where this time, Alex Ross draws the Vulture. It's a really cool, iconic character. Then, we have The Avengers Assemble Omega, issue 1. Probably won't read this book at all. I won't touch it with a 10-foot pole, but you can't deny the great Galactus cover right there. So nice. Again, done by Alex Ross. Then we dive into the Amazing Spider-Man other variant cover. Uh, this is issue 24. Really nice-looking cover right here as he's writing that spider glider, so that's pretty neat. But now we're going to go into the Amazing Spider-Man 24 main cover with your your favorite John Ramuda Jr. here. We get to see one issue away now from the dramatic events that are going to take place in this series. So does Peter Parker go back in time or to that dimension to go rescue Mary Jane and Paul? I don't know. We'll see. But this definitely opens up with some thing in there. So that's pretty cool. And it, actually, he's drawn pretty nice. And here we get to see Spider-Man. I'm not going to show any more of this comic book. I don't want to spoil what happens. I will be talking about this book probably on Friday. Then we have a new book from DC, issue one, Superboy, A Man of Tomorrow. I think this was like the round robin winner from last year and they're releasing this book now this year. So this will be talked about in Worthy Ones on Thursday, which is tomorrow. Here's some of the interior artwork. Just very curious to see if you guys are on board with this series. So yes, Superboy, issue one. Then we have Batgirls, issue 17. Not buying it for the story, buying it for that Covener, uh, cover because Stephanie Brown looks really nice on there. I think that purple and that yellow really pop. Here's some of the interior artwork in here real quick. And I heard this series is being canceled. Unfortunate for fans that read the series. 
Another really good book is World's Finest. This is issue 14. What a great mystery the last issue had to offer for its fans. And we get to learn more about uh, Metamorpho and obviously who killed Stag. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Dan Moore's artwork is second to none in this series. Check out Robin flying on Superman. That is so cool, man. Great book. I recommend it to everybody. Always on my top. Then we have DC's War of Undead Gods. This is issue eight of eight, the conclusion. And I think we are done with DC's. I don't think Tom Taylor has it in him to write another volume. In fact, I don't think there needs to be any more volumes. In fact, I think maybe it should have been done after volume two. But I'm curious to see how this ends. Very emotional driven comic. Very has a lot of shock value as well. So we'll see what it has. We're counting down to The Flash. We're getting to the end of it, right? Issue 797. I think we're going to have some lighter toned issues here as it comes to the last few issue of Jeremy Adams' run. And here we have some artwork. It looks like we got, um, uh, who is it? Swamp Thing in there. Oh, this is a nice little page right here. I didn't expect that. You got the Super Suns in there. That's a really nice little treat there. So that's issue 797. Then we have Nightwing, issue 103. Not as fond on the book as I once was with it. I know the Teen Titans are on it, or the Titans, I should say. But maybe it should be called Titans now instead of Nightwing. Because it's not just Nightwing anymore. It always has somebody else in the book. Artwork is phenomenal. Always looks great. Hopefully this adventure that they go in, where they're in like this demon world or limbo world, will be worthwhile to read. So can't wait for that one. And then we have this Superman issue three. Man, this cover by Matina is absolutely gorgeous. This comic book has been really good as well. Check out the artwork. It almost reminds you of a simpler time when it comes to Superman and he's dealing with Parasite in this book. So yeah, I can't wait to see what happens. And the Parasite is like multiplying. It's not just one creature anymore. So that's really, really cool. And so we talk about Warlock, right? I got another variant cover of that one with Howard the Duck wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. So cool, awesome looking cover there. More Independence, we got The Last Barbarians. So we wind up getting that one. That's a really great comic book as well as we get to see this adventure continue with Sylve. And we're finding out more and more that this job that she's on is a little bit shady. This kid has magical powers. And the person that hired her, I think, wants this kid for himself to use those magical powers. Great artwork. Solid story here. I am a huge Street Fighter fan, so of course I had to pick up the Cami book. I want to see what this book has to offer. I will be talking about it in Worthy Ones as well. Check out the artwork. A lot of action right? What would you expect in the Street Fighter book? So, so cool right there. All right. And then we have Terror War issue one. I have no idea. Don't have the slightest idea. It was a new number one that I could talk about on Worthy Ones this week. So I'm like, okay, we'll read it. We'll talk about it. A lot of explosive action. Guy with a gun. He looks pissed off. We'll see. Speaking of guys with guns, we got Punisher. This is issue 11. I think shit is going to hit the fan when it comes to this book because we got Punisher possibly doing battle against the Avengers, Captain America, some of the other people like Doctor Strange. This book has been nothing short of phenomenal. So there you guys have it. There is the haul for the week. I want to know what you picked up. Like I said in that opening intro and of course guys if you love what you see I got more content right here. This is my top 10 most anticipated comics for next week. And of course, guys, keep buying, keep collecting, but always remember, read your comics. Guys, happy new comic book day.